Have you ever wondered why a summary function of a test like ANOVA tells you that the number of cylinders significantly affects car mileage without explaining how? Or have you ever been puzzled why a model compares all categories of a categorical predictor to only the reference category without comparing categories to each other? And what about those mysterious slopes with standard arrows? we get as a model coefficients instead of the averages per category with 95% confidence intervals that we actually want. Moreover, summary function doesn't adjust p-values for multiple comparisons, which increases the probability of discovering nonsense by making too many type 1 errors. Summary function doesn't plot the results of a model and makes it almost impossible to interpret interactions. So, if you've ever been frustrated due to similar issues, you are definitely not alone. The summary function doesn't actually provide a very useful summary. And that's why we need a means package, which solves all those problems. Even the simplest a means application provides averages with confidence intervals, compares all categories to each other pairwisely, adjusts p-values for multiple comparisons, and can be easily plotted. And that's just a beginning, because eMeans can do so much more. But before we unleash the full power of eMeans package, we need to understand what eMeans actually stands for. The eMeans is an abbreviation for estimated marginal means. Estimated is part of the name, since results are estimated or predicted only from models, not from data. The means is part of the name, because the averages themselves are estimated. However, the term means is just a generalization, because for a median-based regression, a means would estimate the marginal medians, while for a logistic regression, a means calculates marginal probabilities. So the last part of the name is called marginal because it describes a group of values that we want to compute an average for. For a categorical predictor, each category is a margin. For a numeric predictor, an average of that predictor is the margin. For example, a marginal mean of miles per gallon for 4 cylinders is 26.7, and for 8 cylinders only 15.1, while the average MPG will be estimated for an average horsepower of 147. All margins of a model are combined in a reference grid which is the foundation for estimated marginal means, because we can estimate the mean at each point in this reference grid, or even define new points on the reference grid we want to estimate the means for. But let's take it one step at a time, starting with a single categorical predictor. The reference grid of this model shows three points we can estimate mean MPG for, namely cylinders 4, 6 and 8. The means function displays those means with their 95% confidence intervals, compares the mileage of cylinders among each other pairwisely, and adjusts p-values for multiple comparisons with the TUQ method by default. The default method of adjustment can easily be changed though, which is very useful for several cases. First of all, people might want to use a famous Bonferroni method. However, Bonferroni correction is quite conservative and produces higher p-values as compared to Tukey, which is dangerous because it increases chances to make a type 2 error, namely missing a discovery. Thus, Bonferroni correction is more useful when you have a lot of data, but if you only have a few observations or conduct an exploratory pilot study, you can even stop correcting for multiple comparisons by using adjust equals none argument. I personally prefer Benjamini and Hochberg method to control for the false discovery rate. Interestingly, the means function shows us 95% confidence intervals of the means, but not of the estimates of contrasts, which are differences between cylinders. On the other hand, the contrasts have p-values, which test the null hypothesis that the difference is literally zero while the means section does not test any hypothesis and therefore has no p-values. We could greatly increase the output of a means by using the infer equals true argument. 
This produces 95% confidence intervals for the differences among cylinders, which is more useful than the standard error. It also tests the null hypothesis that the means are actually zero. However, testing a means against zero is not particularly useful, which is why p-values are usually not shown. But it makes a lot more sense to test them against some target mileage, let's say 14. For that, we can use the null argument to set the null hypothesis to 14. This makes cylinder 8, with a mean mileage of 15.1, no longer significantly different from our null hypothesis. The pairwise argument is removed because otherwise the contrast would also have been tested against 14. As you can see, the means function does a great job of summarizing all the important results, while the summary function misses most of them. We can even go in the opposite direction and summarize the means results themselves to include only the most essential information. For that, we'll use the pairwise p-value matrix function, which presents results from a means and pairwise comparisons thereof in a most compact way where the upper triangle displays the Tukey adjusted p-values, the diagonal shows the estimated marginal means, and the lower triangle compares the estimates between levels. In this way, readily used information, such as degrees of freedom or t-ratios, is left out. Another advantage of a means of a summary function is that we can easily plot our estimates with their 95% confidence intervals by using a plot command. The 95% confidence intervals are the default, but you can change them with a level argument if you want to. But the advantages of using a means of a summary do not stop there. The benefits are even more pronounced if we analyze numeric predictors. Namely, instead of just looking at the average 20 miles per gallon for a boring average car, as represented by the mean horsepower of 147, we can estimate mileage per gallon for weak and muscle cars. To do this, we'll reduce our covariate to only the range of horsepower from 52 to 335, which gives us much more informative and less boring look at fuel efficiency. Particularly, weak cars drive further and strong cars drive much less than the average 20 miles per gallon. Moreover, we can specify any particular values of a numeric predictor, which might be useful when we have a non-linear relationship, but still need to figure out the efficiency of cars at different values of horsepower. Let's use 1, 2 and 300 horsepower and not only plot the estimates, but also compare them statistically by using the comparisons equals true argument. The blue bars represent the 95% confidence intervals for the estimated marginal means, and the red arrows show statistical comparisons among them. If an error from one mean overlaps with an error from another mean, the difference is not significant. Speaking of significance, if we want to see the exact p-values for pairwise comparisons among the different horsepowers, we again can add the pairwise argument in front of the tilde and see that after crossing the 200 horsepower threshold, the mileage doesn't significantly change anymore, but stays at around 14.5 miles. Now, having learned what a means does with one categorical and one numeric predictors, let's figure out what happens if we have both in a multiple model. In models that include covariates, estimated marginal means are often referred to as adjusted means. For example, consider a scenario where we want to understand the effect of profession on salary. We might include age as a covariate in our model because salary certainly changes over the lifetime. By holding age constant at its average, we are controlling for the influence of age and are able to better understand the unique effect of profession on salary and therefore make more accurate predictions. If you wonder whether we really need any covariate at all, you can compare the AKX information criterion of a model with to the model without this covariate. The lower AIC of the model with age indicates that the covariate improves the model 
and thus makes predictions of salary by profession indeed more realistic. The average age of 41 years shows that industrial workers earn slightly below 100k, while the IT crowd earns over 116k, which is already a first insight into our question. However, we can go one step further and ask a means to provide salary estimates for different ages in order to see how strongly salary increases over a lifetime for different professions. For instance, if people start working at 25 and finish working at 65 years old, we will see that IT professionals receive a salary of over 100k already at the beginning of their career, at the age of 25, while factory workers only reach that 100k mark by the age of 42. The model with two categorical predictors works a little differently. If we examine the estimated marginal means of cylinders while adjusting for automatic transmission, the immense command indicates that the results are somehow averaged over the levels of the variable AM. I was initially unsure of what this meant, so I calculated the means of cylinders separately for transmissions 1 and 0 using by argument and averaged them to get the same estimated marginal means we obtained initially. Oh, by the way, if you want to display the sample size of every level, use this argument. So, in the case of a numeric covariate, it means are estimated for the mean of that covariate. However, for a categorical predictor, it means calculates the average for each category and then takes the average of the estimated marginal means over the categories. But what happens if we have two numeric predictors? To answer this question, let's consider the horsepower and weight of cars in the same model. The reference grid tells us that the mileage will be calculated only for the averages of predictors, which is somewhat boring. However, using the cough-reduce argument we learned about today, we can tell a more interesting story that is already part of the model, but would have gone untold if we had only used this summary function. In particular, weak and light cars are the most efficient, as they drive the most mileage nearly 30 miles per gallon of fuel. If a car is heavy, it can only manage to drive 14.5 miles, which is less than a light but sporty muscle car with a mileage of 20 miles per gallon. The most inefficient cars, however, are strong and heavy, which can only manage 5.5 miles per gallon, so you'll never pass a gas station. Plotting the results supports our conclusion that increasing the strength and weight of cars decreases their efficiency. The only thing we would need to be absolutely sure about our finding is the p-values. However, if we use the pairwise argument in front of the tilde to get contrasts between values, we oddly get identical results for different horsepower levels. This happens because in a multiple model without interactions, we can only adjust the effect of one single predictor, such as weight, while the other predictors are held constant and do not change or vary. However, when we introduce interactions, things dramatically improve, because we can calculate estimated marginal means for every level of one predictor within every level of the other predictor, and we can easily obtain contrasts between levels with unique p-values. Thus, if you want to step up your data science game and unleash the real power of a means, you should definitely watch the next video.